the religious tradition that we're going to approach today is Judaism. Now, Judaism needs no introduction, uh, like some of the other religions that we've spoken about. It's, uh, it's a globally well-known religious tradition, like Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, and Buddhism. And yet, those other religious traditions number uh, in, the up, in the hundreds of millions of adherents to uh, upwards of a billion and more uh, uh, adherents. And Judaism can number itself under in 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 the in the low millions uh, not even the very low millions and so what accounts for the extraordinary influence of a religious tradition that is numerically much smaller than the other traditions uh, what is to account uh, for the extraordinary influence of this religious tradition um, this extraordinarily uh, this ancient and extraordinarily diverse religious tradition well much of its influence derives from its being what some scholars have recently referred to as a mother religion, or uh, Hinduism is also uh, in that category. Uh, this is a, a parent religion, because Christianity and Islam and all of the diversity uh, are not understandable or even probably possible apart from the heritage of Judaism and the heritage of the biblical prophets and the, the way of relating to the divine that was, was given, was gifted to the world through the Jewish tradition. Um, uh, so, uh, Judaism uh, is a source of some of the most important religious traditions, but also some of the most significant religious and social ideas in human history. Um, and these gifts, uh, meant Judaism's religious gifts to humanity, include an ancient stress, and this is one of the most important aspects of Judaism, an ancient stress on social justice. And wherever in Christianity and Islam and in the modern Western worldview, the, even the values of the Enlightenment, wherever we find a stress upon the rights of the outcast, of the, of the foreigner, of the immigrant, of the uh, less privileged, of the poor, where we find a stress upon their rights and their well-being over against the rights of the, of the elites and the wealthy and the powerful, there we find uh, the accent, the emphasis upon social justice that was introduced to the world uh, through the uh, great uh, and teaching, the great prophetic missions of, of, of the prophets of, of Israel. And it's possible that there's an influence here. We hear echoes of Zarathustra, and indeed we may well hear that. But this message was broadcast to the broader world by Judaism. And in the ancient world, Judaism was a religion that did make converts, but later this, this, this activity uh, uh, basically ceased. And, and through the influence of Christianity and then later of Islam, this notion of justice, of social justice, became in, encoded in uh, the, the, the global DNA of humanity. So I would say that's probably the greatest contribution uh, of Judaism to the world, but others include the revelation of Torah, of God's instructions to the Jewish people and to the rest of us who may listen in uh, to the revelation of, of, uh, of, the, of God to, to Moses and to the prophets uh, in, in Torah. Monotheism, this is, of course, a big topic and a big word, but the slowly developing idea of there being one, one God of the universe is an idea that uh, became very influential in Judaism and then later through uh, its daughter or its children religions, its, the, its offspring religions. Other examples, Judaism provides us with the most stirring example in human history of, of people able to endure uh, under the most, and to persist under the most difficult of circumstances over many millennia. And also, vi what is not often known about Judaism, to people who may not be so familiar with the tradition, is that it is a richly mystical religious tradition, a vibrantly mystical tradition, the mysticism of which is grounded in a deep love of study, study of scripture, and, uh, and, in, and in profound forms of mystical prayer, sometimes known as Kabbalah. And as one schol a scholar of Judaism, Norman Solomon, uh, uh, explains, the learning of Torah 
Scriptural study, scholarly study, is one of the highest spiritual values in Judaism, and it is also the source of the greatest joy in the home. And in our day and age, it's, it, this is where religious traditions, traditional religions can be so valuable to us because um, it provides us with uh, countervailing, countercultural models over against the pervasive consumerism and digitization of our common life together today, in which, sad to say, the worship of celebrities and of wealthy celebrities, of wealthy and powerful people is all too common. And to have our, to be called back to the study of something that might seem as useless as the study of a, of a religious text, and to make that the center of one's life and to derive the greatest joy as a family in such study, what a counter-cultural image that is. And it points us to some of the sources of a deep humanism, a humanism that can make our lives more fulfilling. Of course, I have great love for religious traditions, and hopefully it comes through at moments like that. And the love derives not from some personal whim, but from, the, from what I think is the fact that traditional religions, when they're pursued in a humane way, are, uh, are, provide us with the deepest sense of fulfillment possible in human life. Um, there's so much. How much, what can one say about, uh, about, uh, about Judaism in such a few moments? But what I would like to say that uh, Judaism as a whole, as a whole, tends to stress um, practice over beliefs. It tends to stress ethics over theology. It stresses being a decent person more than some kind of exalted notion of spiritual perfection. It, it, it stresses correct deeds, doing what's just and what's right, rather than just engaging in ritualistic activities or having straight, correct, perfect doctrine. It, it stresses ethics rather than doctrine. It, Judaism is a religious tradition that doesn't speak generally much about the afterlife, but doesn't mean there isn't an afterlife because the afterlife is life in God, the one who gave the Jewish people Torah, gave them and made that uh, 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 unending covenant with them. But Judaism does also value the world in which we live because, after all, in the, in the Hebrew Bible, in the first book of the Hebrew Bible, in the stories of creation, does God not say uh, repeatedly uh, in the acts of creation that this is, this is good, this is tov, this is tov, this is good. And so Judaism is, has never really been a religion of ascetics and monks. And, it's been a religious tradition that sees the, the creation as God's good gift to be used in a, in a way that is, uh, that is in accord with the gift that God has given us. And this attitude, of course, is expressed in Islam as well and in many expressions of Christianity, particularly in the Christianity of the last five centuries. This, this attitude of the goodness of the material world has become more prominent. Uh, another central idea in Judaism, and this is one of its great contributions, and it's, it's, a unique, it's a unique feature of Judaism. It's the idea that God acts in history, that God is a historical actor. And the model for this comes in the stories that are told of the deliverance of the people of Israel through uh, God's uh, anointed servant, Moses. And we, many of us, if not everybody in the world, are familiar with the story of how, how the, the Hebrews in captivity were led uh, into, uh, into the land of promise through many trials and, and tribulations by uh, the prophet uh, chosen by God, Moses. And so this, you, you can debate the historicity of these events. The idea here, however, is central, has been central to the development of the Western consciousness, which differently from many other civilizations stresses history the importance of history, the decisiveness of historical events. And this is traceable back to the early, to the uh, insistence of the Hebrew people and later the Jewish people that God is one who acts in our history and that God's actions are not over because God's reign will eventually embrace the whole of the world in, in God's, uh, God's wisdom and knowledge and, uh, and that in, in the hearts of human being, beings there will be a desire to do righteously, to live righteously, to live in justice and to create justice in a world in which everyone is oriented in a perfected creation uh, to, to, to God and the life, life in God. So history is very important in Judaism as well. Um, 
Torah is, is central and the study of Torah. Torah, by the way, is translated as instructions. That's probably the better translation of that. There are older translations that are not so helpful. So we think of, uh, of Torah as God's instructions, the Ten Commandments, if you will, our mitzvot. Um, these are commandments. These are commandments is so st stark of word. They're instructions. They're guidelines. Torah is God's guidelines. And there's much more that one can say, the beauty of, of the Sabbath uh, and its and, and the observing of the Sabbath. But in the end, I think what's most important to keep in mind about Judaism is that it has given the world a model of, of a people devoted to learning, uh, dedicated to justice and generosity under the most trying of circumstances.